Hi, good morning. Uh. Uh, before we start the class, there are a few announcements. One is, uh, I, I would like to wish you all a happy Chinese New Year. So this Friday, we, will not, we are not going to have any class. But next Monday, the class will be as usual. Okay. So those class wrap of your tutorial group for on a Friday, please let me know when you can uh, have your replacement class. So we arrange our replacement class. Yeah. Okay. Before we start the class, any question about your assignment? Have you checked through your assignment question? I already posted in the uh, Google Classroom. Yes, and also sir. explained to you last week, right? Any, 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 any question? Uh, any problem? Uh, sir. Yeah, yeah. Can you? Uh, I want to ask. Uh, uh, I want to ask because uh, our team are planning to uh, to do the self-driving car as our topic, uh, So may I ask? Self-driving car. Okay. Uh, so is it is it considered uh, latest technology? Uh, because we want to get the consent from. So first yes, 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 yes. The only teacher right. review will be uh, the most recent one. Oh, so such steering car is still considered a uh, latest technology. Yes, right? yes, yes. We did yeah, five okay. to ten years still considered as a recent technology. Okay, 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 thank you. All right. Okay, any other question? Um, sir, could you explain yeah. the part about integrity at work? Integrity at work. Okay, so we we when we work, we have to work it professionally. Okay, so we have to abide by by our work. Code, code of conduct for a registered person so that our our work is a sustainable and 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 uh, there's ethic part is there okay in other words you need to tie up with your code of conduct la. all right sir thank you okay all right okay any other question if no then we're going to start the class now all right okay let me start the recording first yeah Okay, so last week we have talked about the code of conduct for a registered person, right? So what are the do and don'ts of as an engineer? And also we have talking about the what is the road to, to be a, how to become a professional engineer, right? So today we are going to talk about technology and society. Okay, it is something like that, what you all have discussed during your tutorials class. So for this uh, topic, technology and, and, and society, we are going to take around two, three weeks to finish it. So I will only up, uh, upload the PowerPoint slide after we have finished the lecture on this topic. Okay, right. Now let me present the slide here. Yeah. Can you see my slide? Can you see my screen a lot, class? Um, haven't yet. Haven't yet. Uh? Yes, no. Ah, okay, okay, now can see already, right? Yes, sir. Okay, right, now. So for today's and uh, next week, we are going to talk about uh, technology and society. So what is the objective of this uh, topic? The first objective is, let me put on my... Let me check the, whether the recording is there. Okay, the recording is on idea. Okay. Okay, what is the objective or what are the objective of this topic? Okay, the objective of this topic is to sorry. Okay, is to for you to understand the inter interrelationship between that technology and society, how they are interrelated to each other, okay? And also we are going to talk about how and what engineer, engineers can do to shape the define and define this relationship. That means in order, what, what can you do in order to influence the interrelationship between technology and society? Okay, you as an engineer, what are the things that you can do to influence the relationship between this, uh, these two entities, technology and society? Okay, and then the lastly, we also are going to look at the impact of technological changes on the society and how to analyze this impact. Okay, this is similar with what uh, you have done for your two tutorial. The, the, the impact of, uh, what is that? The impact of uh, WhatsApp and internet on the society. Okay, so the objective of this uh, module here is we are going to look at these three 
things here. Okay. And this one is tied up with your learning outcome number two. Yeah. Okay. Discuss about the engineering issue and the impact on the society, health, uh, global and uh, environmental issue. Okay. Now, what uh, before we start discussing about uh, technology and society, we have to put a boundary first. So we have to define what does this mean by society? What is society? Society is a self-reproducing grouping of individuals occupying a particular territory. Okay, it's a self-reproducing grouping. That's why it can reproduce by its own. It can grow by its own, and then it occupy a certain area. Okay, a certain particular territory which may have its own distinct culture and institution that influences its member individually or group. So, and they, they also have their own culture, okay, distinctive culture. They have their own culture and also have their own system. And all this culture and system are influencing the members of this society, whether individually or as a group, okay? So, this is mean by society, okay? In short, society is a self-reproducing group that have their own, own culture and also system that influence its member individually or group. Okay. And then what are the so what is the social chain that we are talking about? So when we talk about social chain, it is referring to a general terms which refers to change in the nature, the social institution or social system, the social behavior or the social relations of a society or a community of people. Okay, this is important for you to know what does it mean by social chain. It is not talking about a chain on the individual level. Okay, it is talking about the chain of a social behavior or social relationship of a society as a whole. Okay, so during the tutorial class, when you discuss about the changes of society or the impact on society, many of you go into down into the individual level. That is not right. Okay, so we want to discuss as the chain on the society as a whole. Okay, and the micro view. Uh, not not a not a micro view, yeah. It's a macro view. Okay, okay. Up to here, any question? So now you know what does it mean by society, and then you put a boundary there already, and then whatever your discussion is within the boundary, and you know what is what does it mean by social change? Okay. Now, what is technology? What is technology? Technology is dealing with creation and use of technical means or technical method and their interrelation with life, okay? A technology is interrelated with our life, okay? If something that is technology that is not related with our life, then it is not considered as a technology, yeah? Society and the environment, okay, interrelationship with the society and the environment also, drawing upon industrial arts, engineering, applied science, pure science, as applied to industry, okay? So in other words, that technology is a knowledge that dealing with the creation and use of technology uh, technical methods yeah technical methods and they are related to our society our life and environment okay and drawing up upon the industrial art engineering applied science pure science and as applied to the industry okay now how about cloning do you know the cloning the clone clone of a human the clone of an animal is it considered as a technology in Malaysia hello class if follow this definition, is cloning uh, considered as a technology in this uh, context? So you, you mean the uh, animal clone? Yes, animal clone, C L O N E. Come on, have a try, class. What do you think, Chongyi? If the clone is C L O N E, it doesn't seem so in Malaysia. Lah. Yes, in Malaysia, even the clone technology is uh, it, it, it is there. Then the uh, the country like U S or the, or those advanced country, right? So if they are inter interrelated with their life. But here in Malaysia, we don't have a cloning yet. Okay, so there is no relationship between uh, there is no interrelation between the cloning and the life. And our life here in Malaysia and our society and our environment. So in this case, in Malaysia context, cloning may not be considered as a technology. All right? How about computer? Uh, computer we use it daily, is it every day we use a computer, right? So in that case, in, in the context of Malaysia, computer there is an interrelation with our life, society, and environment. So in that case, then the uh, 
uh, what we say computer is considered as a technology in Malaysia context. So are you clear? Yeah. So before we answering any question, we need to define what does it mean first. Okay. Otherwise, this, the, the scope of this paper is too broad. Then we'll go everywhere. Okay. Now, second one, terminology, technology is also terminology of an art, science, etc. and technical terms. Okay. It is a technological process, invention, method or similar. The way social group provide themselves with the material needs of their civilizations. This is the way how the society provide themselves to create material or resources that they need for their life, okay, for their civilizations. So this is technology, okay. It, it can be a referring to artifact or hardware. It can be a technology, can be a physical uh, product. And just now uh, someone asking about question about the, the autonomous driving car, isn't it? Right? So is it a physical product? The technology is embedded in the physical product. But sometimes technology also can be embedded in the human activity, like the process involved in making and use of a hardware. It's a social technical system. For example, you have a trade secret. Okay, Let's say you are, you are, you are, you are the competitors uh, to uh, Kandaki Fried Chicken. You have your own trade secret. You have your own, own recipe. Right? So that kind of uh, technology is not embedded in the hardware or the or on the artifact, it is embedded in the human activities. It's embedded in the process. Okay, so in the don't never think of the technology must be something that tangible. Yeah, it can be something that intangible. So it's a process involved in making and making off and use of hardware. Okay, also know how. It, uh, technology can referring to the know how or knowledge or information, skill, technique, and procedure needed to devise, use to maintain and develop equipment and processes. Okay, your knowledge that you, you have gained from the studying the technical paper, it can be uh, considered as a technology also if it is uh, there is an interrelationship with the life, social, and environment. Okay. Okay, what are the characteristics? Just now that one is some of the definitions of uh, technology. So if, uh, if something that is uh, called themselves as a technology, what are the characteristics? Okay. If I'm asking you whether computer is uh, considered as a technology in Malaysia or not, you can use a definition to discuss. Yes, it is a considered as a technology because it's related to the life, environment, and social. Or you can use this characteristic, these five characteristics, to evaluate whether computer is a technology or not. Okay. First thing first, a technology must form a human cultural activity. That means it must be used in our daily life. It, it becomes part of our cultural activity already. So it form a, a form of, it's a form of human cultural activities. Yeah, like cloning. That is not a form of human cultural activity in Malaysia yet, right? That is too new. So it may not be considered as a technology. Right? Involve making choices in response to normative or our standard value. Okay, and the correct one and the second characteristic is involve the making of choices. We are going to make the choice whether to use it or not to use it or to alter it or whatever based on our normal value, based on our standard value that we have. And also it, form, it is forming and transforming the material world. Uh, using a technology, it can form our, our material worlds or transform of our material worlds. Yeah? For example, like the steel uh, making uh, technology, it transforms the material world, right? And then it's done with the aids of tools and procedure and not random or wish whisker. And if it is a if it is a considered as a technology, it is done with the aids, with the help of a tools and procedure. Okay, it is not a random thing. You must you, you must have a proper procedure how to do it. Okay. And for practical ends or practical uh, result or purpose, not just pure knowledge or art. So technology is not pure knowledge of art. It is a practical ends, practical ends, okay, or the purpose. It serves the practical use of the knowledge. So therefore, in this one, differentiate between the science and technology, right? Science, it could be just pure knowledge. Whereas technical, uh, technology is a practical ends or purpose, right? So when you evaluate what does it mean by uh, one item, that what does it mean by technology, whether the, the item is considered as technology or not, you can evaluate this characteristic one by one, okay? If let's say here got five characteristic, and then you evaluate, for example, let's say the computer, you evaluate, yes, it's form of human cultural activities. It involves making decisions in response to normative values. Yes, what type of computer we want to use? Uh, what, what, what software are we going to use? Uh, we, what is a spec and so forth? It involves decision making, right? Following our, our normal standard. 
and also it can transform and for transforming the material world. The software can do something, or maybe with this one, it's not so clear. Okay, we leave it out, and then it is done. The use of computer is done with the aid of tool and procedure. Yes, and it also for the practical ends of purpose. So out of the five, it meet around four characteristic. So in that case, you may want to quantify or you may want to qualify a uh, computer as a technology in our Malaysia society. So up to here, can you all follow? Okay, any question? If no question, then we will continue, yeah? Okay, this diagram is another definition of technology that we look at the three aspects, okay? The first aspect is the people. If, if there is a technology, it must involve people, and then the, what are the things that involve in people? The people skill and people knowledge, okay? So in other words, a technology must involve people skill and people knowledge, and then the as, there is another component called knowledge, then it uh, involves the format of knowledge, correctness of the knowledge, and language of the knowledge. Okay, they, they, this one, the people will use their knowledge to develop something. Okay, and then we need to have a physical tools as one of the characteristic of the uh, technology mentioned just now is with the use of aids and procedure. Okay, tools. Okay, that involve the use of tools such as material, machine, hardware, physical procedure, and facilities. Okay. So if a technology, there is an inter interaction, interrelationship between these three factors, knowledge, science, people, physical tools, okay? If you have only knowledge, you have only people, but you don't have a physical tools to convert it into the meaningful, uh, uh, to get the meaningful result, it may just be considered as a science. It is not a technology, all right? If there is just a knowledge and the physical tools only, there is no people, so that the technology... The, the, the so-called technology have no inter interrelationship with the life and environment and social, isn't it? And following the characteristic of uh, technology, it does not form part of the cultural activity also. So in that case, it also doesn't consider it as a technology, right? So in other words, bear in mind, in order for something to, cons to, to be called technology, it needs to involve science, uh, knowledge, and then people, how the people levels or scale level of knowledge, and also the physical tools. You might have three components inside, okay? If I ask you what are the com key components of a technology, then your answer will be knowledge, what is that? People, physical tools, okay? If I'm asking you what are the characteristics of technology, then this one will be the characteristic of technology, right? If I'm asking you what is technology, then you can use characteristic of technology to justify your answer, or you can use definition to justify your answer, or you can use this diagram to justify your answer, whether the, 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 the item is considered as a technology or not, okay? Then next, another uh, broad definition of technology is involved cultural aspect, this same as a characteristic of technology where it forms a cultural activity, right? And then there is an organizational aspect, economy, industrial activity, professional activity, user, and so forth. And there is a technical aspect that is... Uh, knowledge, skill, techniques, tool, machine, and so forth. Okay, this knowledge that is under the knowledge that we have talked about. Just now we're talking about the definition of uh, technology, isn't it? We have a knowledge, people, and tools, okay? But now this definition is broader, okay? We're talking about cultural aspect and organizational aspect as well as a technical aspect. So these three are the key components of a technology in the broader sense. Okay, technology is also defined as an example of theoretical and practical knowledge, okay? So technology is not only having the theoretical, whatever theoretical, theoretical knowledge that you have learned from the lecturer or whatever is still not considered as technology yet, okay? It must be example of theoretical and a practical knowledge. That's why you have a practical, uh, practical classes and so forth to train your practical knowledge. Know-how, skills, and artifacts that are used by the firm to develop, produce, and deliver its product or services. Okay, so technology is a theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge used by a firm or organizations to develop, produce, and deliver its product or services. Okay, now, as I mentioned just now, technology doesn't mean that it's a tangible product. It can be embodied in the people, in the process, or whatever. So technology can also be embodied in people, materials, facilities, procedures, and in physical processes, okay? 
key element of technology may be implicit. Maybe you can you cannot see it, you cannot feel it. It's implicit. Okay, existing only in embedded form. Let's say the trade secret that just now I mentioned about the 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 you know, this uh Kanaki fried chicken. The trade secret based on know how. Okay, is embedded in your thinking in your process. It's implicit. Implicit means something that you cannot see easily, right? It's hidden, like craftsmanship and experience. You, you it's very difficult for you to to hold the experience or to touch the experience, isn't it? As compared to a computer, right? But it is uh, considered as a technology because it is a embodied embody in the people. Okay, craftsmanship and experience usually have a large tacit component, large uh, implicit component. So that important parts may not be expressed or codified in manuals, right? Routines and procedure, recipe, rules of thumb, or other explicit articulations. Okay. So craftsmanship, some craftsmanship and experience may be considered as a technology also, right? So it doesn't mean that technology must be referred to the latest uh, advancement in the technology such as IT, robotic, and then uh, automation and so forth. Not, not really, okay? They have many aspects. Depends on which angle are we looking at, looking at it. Now, science. We all we usually we are, when we talk about science and technology, science and technology. So, what are the difference between science and technology? Just now we have mentioned that technology that is a practical means, right? And then uh, if there is no if it is pure knowledge, then it will be considered as a science. Okay. So it's a group of methods for the purpose of discussing, creating, confirming, disconfirming, recognizing, and disseminating truth assertions about the nature. Okay. It's talking about find out or discovery, discover. What is the truth about the nature? This is called science, okay? It is a branch of knowledge or study dealing with a body of facts. It's dealing with a body of facts or truth, systematically arranged and showing the operation of general law. Okay, what are the general law in this universe? Law of gravity, okay? This is one of the signs, okay? A systematic knowledge of physical or material world gained through observations of physical science. Observe. Okay, your, through your observations of physical science, yeah, and then any of the branches of natural or physical science. Physical science means like chemistry, physics, yeah, all, all those uh, chemical are uh, considered as a physical science. Okay, so there is no practical, not so much practical component on there, and then they doesn't meet the practical uh, uh, result. It's purely knowledge. So this is science. Okay, so when you talk about science and technology, that's why one is talking about pure theory. One is talking about theory plus practical experience or know-how, okay? And when we're talking about technology, it doesn't just refer to the tangible products. It can be a service, it can be a in, embedded in the person, or it can be uh, uh, embedded in the process or whatever, okay? So this is one of the things that you need to be sure with yourself, okay? Because I, I, I understand that all this while when we talk about technology, we're referring it to IT, to car, to, to rocket or whatever, all, all those are tangible things, but we seldom treat intangible thinking or processes as a technology, okay? So now for this paper, we define technology as a theoretical and practical knowledge, okay? And it can be embodied in people, material, facility, procedure, and so on and so forth, okay? So you need to change your mindset, yeah? Okay, up to here, any question? Can you follow? Hello, class. Hello. Uh, I can't hear you. Who is that? Yes, sir. Chung Yi. Okay, Chung Yi. Okay, thank you. All right. 64, 60, 60 over of you. Uh, why so quiet? Uh? Okay, when I ask, there's no response. Looks like I'm talking alone. Okay, technology and society in history. Now, let's look at the brief history in uh, the our, our human civilizations, okay? What are the technology used in each age? Okay, and then you will be surprised. Uh, and something that we call it as a normal things, we don't think it is a technology, but uh, following the definition, it is considered a technology, for example, like fire. Okay, fire is considered as a technology in the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. Okay, so we have gone through the four, four different types of uh, age. Yeah, okay, then the first one is Stone Age. Yeah, the caveman time, time is a Stone Age. Then that time, the human being are, are act like a gatherer or hunter go and hunt the animals for their food and so forth. And then after the Stone Age, then people discover how to use a fire. Then they 
they have, we, we, we start to have a bronze age and iron age. They start to shape the, 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 the material, they start to melt the material, start to cook the, the, the meat and so forth. And that time fire is considered as a technology to the bronze age or iron age because it's interrelated to their cultural activities, right? And it also involves making decisions whether want to have fire or not. And if you go through other, other characteristics, it almost meet all the five characteristics. Okay, and after that, when the steam engine was developed, and then we went into the industrial age. And that time, the machine is a, is one of the main technology. Yeah, and after the industrial age, we have a post-industrial age, which we are having it now. That is called information technology. Yeah, that's an IT play a big role. Okay, let's look at the stone age. So this is the, uh, the diagram, how does the time flow? Yeah, from a stone age to the bronze age to the iron age, and then to the industrial age, and then after that to the post-industrial age. Okay. Now, during the Stone Age, general of agricultural produce or hunter later migrated to farming, food, and livestock. Uh, okay. So this is uh, what the people is doing. This is part of their cultural activity. This is the day-to-day -day activity of the people there. Okay. So the technology limited to changing form of things. Okay. So what are the technologies that they have? The technology of that that they have in the Stone Age is to change the shape of the things, okay, to change the shape. For example, if they have one piece of wood, they may shape it into become a crude knife or a stone. They shape it, they polish it to become a knife, a plow head, or un but they're unable to change the nature of the, or they're unable to change the nature of material, okay? They can only change the shape by polishing or cutting or whatever, okay? And then because they do not have a fire, the fire is still not a technology yet, so they are eating the raw food, okay? They are using their technology called knife, crude knife, cut the meat into a small pieces, okay? But they cannot change the nature of food. They cannot cook the food, okay? So in other words, during the Stone Age, the people know how to use the stone or wood to make knife or whatever. So that time, at that moment of time, this process of making knife is called technology to the Stone Age, Okay? So in, in today's world, we may not consider making knife as a technology, but in the Stone Age, it is a technology, right? So how about Bronze Age? Okay, so fire assisted naturally. Man felt its warm probably affect effects of cooking from burnt crops, animals, carcasses, and after forest fire, okay? So they, they, they discover uh, this uh, fire, the assistance of fire. It could be due to the forest fire or whatever, and then it's not, hey, Wow, when there is a fire, we feel warm, you won't feel cold, right? And then after that, the, the, the forest fire may burn some uh, uh, crops or animals to death or whatever. Then after that, they eat the meat, they find out, hey, it is more, the, the taste is different, it is better taste, tastes better or whatever. So from there, the human beings start using fire to, for their life, okay? Until men able to start and control fire, but unable to use it effectively. They, they, they can start the fire like the fringe stone, they can control the fire, but unable to use it effectively. Their usage of fire is still very limited, okay? Relationship between spark from the striking rock and embers starters fire using flame stone. They use two rock and then they rub with each other. And then later on, the relationship between fire and heat and heat and frictions are understood, okay? So later they know that, oh, whenever there is a fire, we will feel warm, okay? And when they... When, when, when there is something that is a friction, they are rubbed with each other, it will, it, will, it will create heat. And then after that, if we continue rubbing, it will create the heat, will become a, a create a spark or a fire. Okay? So relationship between spark from the striking rocks and amber uh, started fire using fring stone. Yeah? With, with fire, man can change the properties of material. Okay, after they discover the use of fire, they can start to change the properties of material, especially their raw food. Okay? They... They are, they are instead of eating the raw food, they eat the cooked food, okay? But are no longer limit to, limited to natural materials provided by the nature. So they can chain already, okay? They can burn wood, they can burn, uh, uh, they, 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 they can melt iron or whatever, okay? So they can change the nature of the, or uh, change the properties of the materials by the use of fire. So this was what happening to the uh, Bronze Age. Then we come to the, uh, with the technology of fire, men able to innovate and produce new material. Okay, so they cook the food. Uh, the food no longer raw, but cooked food. They can use a clay after they burn it in the in the in, in the fire. It becomes a ceramic. 
Okay, so they create the new 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 material. They create a material with new properties. Okay, and then it's melting means uh, 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 melt the copper or bronze or steel. Then building better proud knife. Their knife is better now, and instead of uh, just polishing the stone or wood, there is a very crude knife. Now they can make sword knife and use of horseshoes. They start to use the uh, horseshoes, metal wheels, and so forth. All these are uh, invented, okay, because of the discovery of fire, okay. So all this, uh, the fire is considered as a technology at the Bronze Age, because it meet the criteria, the five characteristic, or it meet the definitions of uh, technology also, okay. Right. Technology of machine, that is a power, technology of machine power, that is during the industrial age, okay? This is this started since the invention of steam engine by James Watt. And then in, then in the, the material that we use, the, the, the resources that we use, no longer limit to the natural sources of power. Men able to create power at will. Those that mean they can create power. They can use a steam engine to create the power that they want. Okay, and this quickly causing the uh, lead to the uh, the establishment of factory trains and etc. Okay, because of the invention of a steam engine, people now can create power. Okay, we no need to wait for the the, the winds. We no need to wait for the rain. We no need to wait for the wind. Uh, uh, the the ocean wave or whatever to get the power. The, the, to get the power, we can create our power at will. Okay, whenever we need the power, we can create it. So this lead to the establishment of factories, trains, and etc. okay? And then this started the Industrial Revolution in England, okay? The Industrial Revolution started in England. So from steam engine progressed, then slowly, slowly, they progressed to the diesel engine, gas turbine, electrical motor, and so forth. Okay, characterized by power-driven machine manufacturing, and etc. So during the industrial age, or during the the the, the, the the, after the steam engine was invented, the technology are mainly focused on the machine and manufacturing, okay, to, to, give, to, to, to create the power at will. So this is the technology of machine power at the industrial age. Okay, example of the technology effect on society. Okay, effect of technology on society. We can see that the earlier this one are the power and supremacy of the civilized uh, country in the ancient times, isn't it? Right? However, technological dominance does not last. Others will catch up with technology or new technology will make the old one obsolete. Okay? Once upon a time, Romans, Greek, uh, Babylon, they are very advanced. Okay? At, at their, the ancient time, they are very advanced. But... Even though they have a technological advancement, the technology dominance does not last. It won't last forever because others will catch up with technology. Whenever there is a new technology being created, the old technology will become obsolete. Or old technology will be filtered off. Okay? For example, like, like last time I mentioned about the camera that using the negative. Right? You need to go in the Photoshop, uh, photography shop to buy the negative and then put the negative inside and then you snap a photo. After that, you need to go into the dark room or, or, or to take out your negative and develop it into the print, right? So since the invention or the development of a digital camera, now this technology of a camera that using the negative is become obsolete. It's no longer a, a technology, yeah? So that's why a technological dominance does not last, yeah? It's very much depending on the development of new technology. Very often, the one new technology Created the old technology will be uh, discontinued or be, uh, be be become phased out or obsolete, right? When you are studying the entrepreneurship, you can still remember a constructive destructions. We talk about the uh, entrepreneurship is a process of constructive destructions. Yeah, uh, so, sorry, uh, creative destructions or constructive destructions. So that's why we construct something and then destruct something. Okay, that is why one of the above all these country they are no longer a uh, uh, famous for their technology now, like Egypt. Now we seldom heard about the technology from Egypt, right? But the, by the time when they build the pyramid, their technology is very high. Nobody can compete with them, all right? Now, as some as some of the example of the effect on the society, invention of plow, they is used for agriculture, right? And then what is the effect of this? Since the invention of plow, we have changed the 
uh, change the power, social power from man uh, from woman to man. Okay, last time the the the, the woman is is stay at home for the agriculture purpose and so forth. That since the invention of plow, then the the man can use it for the agriculture purpose. So that is a shift, yeah, from woman to man. Okay, invention of mass produced automobile. So when we have a start to have this uh, automobile or vehicles, what have we changed? This has changed our, uh, this is one of the earliest uh, automobile, yeah? No roof, nothing, okay? But so creation of suburban housing, okay? So your housing area is no longer concentrated in one part because now with the mass produce of an automobile, you can travel for a long distance already. You don't need to depend on horses or a camel or donkey. Okay, we should need rest after after walking for a long distance. You need a rest, but now with the automobile, you no need uh, to have a rest. Okay, so in, in, indirectly causing you can travel for a longer distance. So this because we can tra travel for longer distance. So indirectly, this created a suburban housing and chain the cost shift richer, chain leisure activity, and do a, we have a greater mobility. We can move here and there, right? So this have changed. So there is a city, then uh, the distance between two cities can be further and further away, right? So this chain of the, these are the chain of the society because of the invention of automobile, all right? Okay, how about invention of lift? So in, last time before we having a lift, before a lift was invented, uh, if you want to go up to, if we have a, a high rise tower, if you want to go up to 10 story, we have to climb the staircase, right? So it is very tiring. So the building that built is all low, very low, maybe one or two floor only, uh, one or two story only. But since after the invention of the lift, then the architecture of a housing concept is changed. We have more high rise tower and so forth, right? Last time we all have a single story or double story houses, but now we have a condo, which is a, more than 30 stories, right? This, uh, this, this condo type of uh, building is impossible without the invention of lift, okay? So in other words, in the, with the invention of the lift, it changed the, our housing concept. Instead of uh, having a one or two story houses, we go to the high rise tower. Okay, and we, uh, our office also, we go to the high rise office. Okay, so this is the chain of the, uh, caused by the lift. Invention of printing presses. Last time before we, uh, we have this uh, printing, what we do, if you want to transfer some knowledge or whatever, we are use our mouth to sing it out, to talk out. We, we, we transfer the message verbally, isn't it? From one person to another person. Or if you have seen some uh, uh, ancient uh, document, they carve the, 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 the content on a, on a piece of wood or whatever, right? So that is a before the invention of printing. So if you want to spread our knowledge, if we want to introduce something new to others, we have very much depending on the person, okay? How is he going to transfer? The knowledge one by one through mouth, and uh, you, we 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 know that when we transfer our message through mouth, very often the the, the during the process there will be have a they will have a distortion of message, right? So it won't be so accurate. So since the invention of printing, he have changed the way we convey our message or we spread our knowledge. Okay, so yeah, the invention of printing presses led to the education of the masses. So now we can print the books. Instead of uh, talk to the student one by one, we can print the books in a thousand copies and then we pass it to the student, they can read and then we can have a class, uh, maybe 100 students per class or whatever, all right? And it also changed the political and economic power of structure, destructions of the social class system. So with this, more people can get the more knowledgeable, okay? So the, 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 the social class such as a uh, laborer and then the, the, the bosses or whatever, the, the the borderline is become blurrer, uh, become not so clear already. So that is a disruption of a social class system. Now, how about the invention of birth control pills, right? Before the invention of birth control pills, we are saying that to become to conceive or to become pregnant is the responsibility of the uh, woman or lady, right? So with the birth control pill, invention of birth control pills, there is an emancipation of woman, okay, or woman's lip. Chain concept of sexuality, moral, moment of woman into workforce, okay? So it changed our morality, uh, our morals also. Well, last time we, 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 we are very careful with that, not to uh, get pregnant or whatever, but now because of the birth control pills, then people are more, uh, 
more open. Okay. All right. How about invention of plastic? Can I have an idea? What are the changes of the society on the invention of plastic? Brenda, are you there? Yes. Uh, what, are, what, are the, what are the impact on society after the invention of plastic? Pollution. Pollution in what way? And they dispose the plastic. Pollution is the effect. It's not changes on the society. You know, we are talking about changes of the human behavior on the society. Pollution is the effect of that. Mm. What is that? They can uh, make more... They can keep things more easily uh, because of the invention of the container of plastic bag or okay. other things. Okay, so? And the economy is improved. Okay, all right. Now, invention of plastic has changed our mentality. Last time when we want to buy something, we bring our own bag, our own container to, to, to get the things, right? But since the invention of plastic, we, we seldom bring our own container or, or, or bag while we go for shopping. Okay, until of late, when we have this ban on the plastic, then we start using back the recycle bag, bring our container to supermarket or whatever. Okay, before we ban the plastic, it has changed the old economic activity, throw away the mentality. Throw away means we, after we use, we just throw it away, disposable. Okay, so and the uh, very convenience as what uh, Brenda mentioned just now, instead of durability. Okay, we don't care about durability. Today I use, I, I, go, I go, go to Speed 99, I buy something, I get a plastic bag, and then after that, I go to uh, KK Mart, I buy something, I use a plastic bag again. Then after that, when I reach home, I take out the barang, then I throw away the plastic bag. Okay? So this creates the uh, behavior, the mentality, throw away. After use, then dispose it off, no need to keep it. So we don't care about durability. Okay? But now, you, 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 if you observe it enough, you'll see that now our, the, the, the government has encouraged us to use a recycle bag and so forth by bending the use of plastic, okay? Or we have to reduce the, the usage of plastic. Where if you ask for the plastic bag from the shopping mall or whatever, you need to pay 20 cents per plastic bag, right? So this, if we are changed the, the throw away mentality, now we are revert back because the use of plastic bag has caused one of the uh, uh, side effect of the using of the plastic bag is to create a very huge pollution. Okay, so now we are going back to the old time, old time, where we use our own container to, uh, when we buy something, okay? So the durability come back again. Okay, with all this example, are you clear about what are the effects of technology on society? Can I have your response? Yes, sir, I have a brief idea about it already. Okay, good, okay. Now let's continue. Okay, technology changes, it creates the, cre creative wave of destructions okay we, we always say the creative destructions huh? just like, as i mentioned creative destructions a new technology will destroy or replace old one okay just like i mentioned about the camera already here there is another few example that you will see that uh, maybe this one is more related to you uh, because your era I'm, I'm not sure have you all seen the audio cassette before yes uh, okay so you see the photograph or the recording, uh, okay? Now we, uh, at first it's a, it, it, it a recording, then after that replaced by audio cassette. And as a technology advancement go, going on, then we come up with the we see, uh, audio CD, right? And then after the CD, then there is an MP3 or, and then DVD coming out, okay? So now you see, the invention of audio CD has replaced the audio cassette, okay? So that when, when we use or we change all our, our song, everything cop copy into the CD, then less people using a cassette, uh, audio cassette already. Now, if you want to buy a cassette player, also very difficult. I don't know uh, where, where to get it. Okay, even audio CD, now we also seldom people use. Why? Because there is an advancement of technology to create v, uh, VCD or DVD, right? Now, and then the memory or the capacity of DVD is much more higher. 
So now people instead of using uh, audio CD or MP3, people are using DVD or MP4, right? So this is how the, uh, what does it mean by creative wave of destructions, okay? How many of you have seen a typewriter before? Have you seen a typewriter before? Yes, on the internet. Okay. All right. Who has? Your house still have? Ah, uh? Chongyi? No, but from internet. Uh. Oh, from internet. Okay. So before the invention of computer, when we want to type a paper, okay, we need to use a machine called typewriter, okay, where you need to press the key button one by one, and then you will make uh, impressions on the paper. So for example, if you want to type a, uh, uh, your assignment with 20 pages, okay, so you need to type one by one, and halfway through, you make a mistake. So what happened? So that particular page, you need to retype all over again, okay? It is very difficult for you to uh, uh, delete and then re uh, erase it or whatever, okay? But later, there is a, a correction tape being uh, invented, and then you can do the make the uh, minor corrections on the, on the on the content that you type, okay. But since the inventions of computer, it become uh, easier to type the document and so forth. So typewriter now is almost obsolete, okay. For example, when I use the uh, just share with you when I use a typewriter to type my final year thesis, my finger all feel very painful, right? Because I, I keep on hitting the the key at the typewriter there, right? If I, I hit it softly then the impressions or, or the printing on the paper is not clear. So I have to hit it uh, uh, with, a, with a slightly long, uh, stronger force. Then only it can become clear, right? And if your, your assignment got any diagram or whatever you want to put it in, sorry, the typewriter cannot do that, okay? So you have to take out and then draw using your own hand, a uh, free hand drawing or whatever, okay? So, and now with the replacement of computer, nobody will no longer want to use typewriter, okay? Now, Spring watches replaced by digital watches. No, previously there. Uh, now, now we are our watch. We need to use battery, right? Mo most of our watch we need to use battery. Last time the the watch is no need to use battery. Is using spring. Okay, so every every maybe uh, every day we need to wind it. Okay, in order to let it functions. So with the invention of digital watches, so no longer the the people is no longer using a spring watch. They are all using the battery one. Okay. And the 16 mm, 16 millimeter movie projector uh, is replaced by the VCR, VCR replaced by VCD, VCD replaced by DVD. Okay. And Manila ropes, uh, the, the, the ropes that you use, like from the gunny set, used by nylon, uh, replaced by the nylon and polypropylene ropes. Okay. So this poly polypropylene rope or nylon rope is called raffia, right? So the, this one is originally is made from the natural fiber. Okay, but this one is dependent on whether we can harvest it or not. But with the use of nylon and polypropylene ropes, we can make uh, produce a rope anytime at will. Whenever we need the rope, we can produce it, okay, in the factory. It no longer depends on the mother's nature. If you want to use a natural fiber, we very much depends on the mother's nature, right? If there is a natural disaster, then we may not be able to get any natural fiber, okay? Slave labor made obsolete by machinery. This is also happening now. Previously, we have a slip or we, we are strongly depending on the labor to, uh, to produce the, or to manufacture the products or, or goods, right? But since the machine is being invented, then the machinery has reduced the, uh, the needs of a labor. Okay, so just, just like now, there are many job, uh, job opportunity will be replaced by automations or artificial intelligence, okay? So one technology come out, the old technology will be destroyed or disappear, right? So like last time, we are, the bank employed many cashier because they are sitting in the front desk to serve the customer. But since the invention of uh, ATM machines or deposit machines, then the number of cashier that needed by the bank has already reduced. Even now, if you go to the bank, you want to bank in certain amount of money, let's say 1,000, 2,000. If you go to the counter, the, the, the cashier may not entertain you. They, they don't entertain you. Right, unless you're the your deposit with a big amount, let's say five thousand and above, then only they entertain you. Otherwise, they ask you to deposit it through using the ATM machine. Right, so this is how our lifestyle change, our our behavior change because of the technology. Right, so major technological changes will destroy and create uh, economies. Right, why we why we say destroy? For example, go back to the camera case again. 
it destroyed the negative industry. It destroyed the film industry. Okay, but it created a new economies of digital camera. So any technological change, uh, it will have a very, very huge uh, impact on the society. Okay, it will destroy or create the economy. So that's why as an engineer, you need to be sensitive. You need to know what are the changes in the, in the technology side, okay, in our daily life. Because if you are not alert enough, one day you will be destroyed, okay? Your, the, the economy the economy field that you are involved will be destroyed if you are not careful enough, okay? Economic development and successful inno innovative uh, innovation cycle. Uh, let me see this one. Sorry, I pressed the wrong thing. Okay, can you see my screen again? All right? Okay, yes, so, so economic development and successful technology innovation is almost 50 years uh, one cycle. But for your information, now the, the, the cycle repeating faster and faster. Uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the presence of the uh, IT, artificial intelligence and automations, the, the, the economy cycle or uh, the successful, successful technological innovation become faster and faster and no longer need 50 years. Right? You, you can see that there are something new coming out uh, maybe 10 years ago and today it becomes obsolete, replaced by another, another technology already. So the technology that we are using today, it may be, it become obsolete, uh, say seven or eight years later. After you graduated from the time you see, working for two, three years, whatever you learn, it could be obsolete. Right? So this is what happening now in the in this fast changing world. Okay, the first one. The first wave of uh, industrial revolution is the due to the invention of the steam engine. With the steam engine, the factory are flourished, we establish more and more uh, factory, railroad expanded and market boundaries. Last time, we, we, without the steam engine, we don't have any automobile, we don't have a, uh, vehicles, we have to depend on animals to carry our goods, to transport our goods, isn't it? So in that case, then the, the, the market boundary usually are quite near to each other, uh, uh, very small. They are traveling only a short distance that near to each other. But with the invention of a steam engine, they start to expand the railroad and then we can travel from further and further. Okay, and then also the steamship dominated the trade. They no longer depends on on the, on, on, on the ancient type of ship. They the steamship it can, can 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 move faster, right? And England as a world workshop for the rest of the world. We start the, the, the industrial revolution actually started in UK, huh? All right, and then the second wave of uh, industrial revolution that is a study in Germany. That is a Euro chemicals. Uh, there is establishment of a steel making and oil refining. Uh, processes. So this is referring to the era where development of petrochemical and the steel industry in Germany. Okay, the, the chemical engineering coming in. Everyone else now has factories in their road. Okay, and new wealth of power creation in petrochemical and steel industry centered around Germany and Europe. So during this uh, 18, 1849 until 1896, right, almost 50, time, uh, 50 years, that there is a, a new well being created, okay, especially in the uh, petrochemical side and the steel industry. Okay, third wave of the uh, uh, what is it? The industrial revolution is the from 1896 to 1920. Yeah, it happened in USA where there is a mass producers uh, mass production of automobile and telephone. Okay, so development of automobile industry by Henry Ford and the telephone industry spur rise of America as an industrial power. Okay, since then, America has become a superpower. Okay, now this one, this slide, it just show you, you know, don't memorize it. Huh? Okay, just show you for your information that the comparison of, of a life 100 years ago, okay, uh, in, in the US, okay, average life expectancy was around 47 years. Now, what is the average life expectancy of a human being in US? I think it's more than uh, 70, isn't it? In Malaysia, we already have 70 over. Average life expectancy is around 70 over, okay, for men. For women, it's, uh, it's even longer. Only 14% of the home have a bathtub. Can you imagine? Only 14%. Uh, 
86% of the home are without a bathtub, right? And only 8% of the home have a telephone. Now, almost every phone have a line phone or if you no know line phone, now, now people stop cutting down their line phone, they use mobile phone, right? Almost every phone, we have a few units of mobile phone. You one unit, your brother one unit, your father one unit, your mother one unit, already four units already, okay? But can you imagine 100 years ago, Go in the US, the so-called uh, developed country, only 8% of the home had a telephone. So how they communicate with the long distance friends or, or uh, how to have a long distance communications, right? So the invention of a uh, telephone has changed the way we communicate with others. There were only 8,000 cars and only 144 miles of paved road. Okay, you can imagine only 144 miles, the, the road is a tar road. Okay, and in the whole country, there is only 800, uh, sorry, 8,000 cars. Now in Malaysia, how many cars we have? Easily more, much more than that, isn't it? Right? Even in Stapa itself, it's more than 8,000 cars already. Okay, and the maximum speed limit in most cities was around 10 miles per hour. Now we are going to the, uh, this one you need to convert to a kilometer uh, if you want. Now our, 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 our speed limit is 110 kilometer per hour, okay? But last time it's only 10 meter per uh, 10 miles per hour, so it's rather slow. The tallest structure in the world was the Eiffel Tower. Uh, the average wage in uh, 19, 1909 was 22 cents per hour. That's your average uh, salary in 1990, uh, 19, is only 22 cents per hour. Now in Malaysia, how much is our average uh, wages? If you, if you work in a McDonald's or whatever, I think it's, it's four or five ringgit per hour, isn't it? Right? You may check it out. I, I'm not really sure how much McDonald's or Kentucky is paying their, their staff per hour. The average worker made between two, 200 and 400 uh, US dollars per year. Okay, per year. 400 US, let's say, uh, let's say one US dollars is equal to four ringgit Malaysia. So that's in one year, they are, they are only making thousand six ringgit Malaysia only. So how to survive? Yeah, one year in, in, in today's world, your half half a month salary already more than thousand six ringgit already, right? A competent accountant could expect to earn two thousand per year. Or oh, last time we professional, if you are a competent uh, accountant, you can earn two thousand per year, two thousand uh, dollar per uh, US dollar per year. A dentist two thousand five per year. A vet a veterinarian between thousand five to four thousand per year. Okay, if let's say we take it four thousand. That is only 16,000 per year. Okay, it's still much, much lower as our uh, our, our salary now today. Okay, uh, if you are mechanical engineers, there is about 5,000 per year. So around 20,000 ringgit per year. Okay, so this is what happened in the 100 years back in the uh, US. So more than 95% of birth took place at home. So when they give birth to a, to, to, to a baby, it, it, is take, it took place at, the, at their home. Okay, they do not have the hospital or whatever, okay, so 95%. Only 5% manage, uh, 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 can afford to deliver the baby at the hospital, okay? 95% deliver their baby at home. And 90% of all doctors had no college educations. Can you imagine uh, the, the, the doctor does not go through a, a, a degree degree or, or degree in medicine or college education as what we've done today, right? So how do they learn their medical uh, skill? We have a big doubt. Okay, 90%. Today, if you are not uh, having a college education on your medical, you don't have a MBBS of, uh, of this uh, degree, you may not, uh, you are not allowed to practice as a doctor, right? So last time, 100 years back, 90% of them, they never gone through the formal educations. Instead, they attended a so-called medical school, many of which are condemned in the, in, in the press and the government as sub-science standard, okay? So the last time there is so-called a substandard uh, uh, doctor uh, medical uh, educations. Two out of every ten adults could not could not could not read or write. Okay, every two person out of ten person they cannot read or write. Now almost everybody can read and write. Only six percent of all Americans had graduated from high school. Six percent only. Now we are talking about we want to match produce uh, mass education, isn't it? We want to produce people with degree, uh, with, with at least a degree, as many as possible, right? And then 
that time is only 6% of American uh, graduated from high school. And marijuana, heroin, and morphine were all available over the counter. And that's when you can buy from the pharmacies or, or, or over the counter. Marijuana, heroin, all these drugs you can buy from, from the drugstore. Okay? Back then, pharmacies say heroin clears the compressions, give buoyancy to the mind, regulate the stomach and bowels, and in fact, it's a perfect guardian of uh, health. Back to uh, 100 years back, okay, the, 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 the pharmacy is saying that heroin is something that is very good, clear the complexions, clear, clear the compression of our skin and, and give a, a guardian of uh, uh, our health, okay? But in today's, marijuana, heroin, and morphine, these all are considered as uh, we, we are not allowed to purchase it over the counter, okay? It only can be prescribed by the medical professions. 18% of households had at least one full-time servant of domestic help. Okay, um, around 20% of the, uh, the family have at least one full-time maid or one full-time servant. Okay, and if you have read the story or you watch a movie or ancient time, you can see that the, 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 especially those rich people, they have many servants, right, in their house. Okay, so at, uh, at least one, one servant, okay, 18% of the household have at least one servant at their house for the, helping them for the house chore. And there were about 230 reported murders in, in the entire USA. This is such a low figure. Only 230 reported murders in the US. Okay, And now it's easily a show up. I don't know how many times of this. Okay, now up to here, can you follow? Any question? So all these are the changes of, of the, the, all these changes are due to the uh, introduction or due to the development of a technology, okay? So in your, in your assignment, I'm expecting you when you are discussing about the changes, of the, 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 the technology development that changed the society or the, or the impact on the society and sustainable development, I'm expecting you to have all this figure to justify your claim, okay? You need to do literature review, literature search, to get the statistic out and then use a statistic to justify your argument, okay? Now, next we are going to talk about technological determinism and social determinism, right? What is technological determinism say? A technological determinism is saying that uh, technology will advance by its own, okay? It's not, it's not uh, the, the advancement of technology is due to the technology itself. It's not because of the society or whatever, okay? Theory of social changes in which technology is viewed as part of an inescapable economic force which affect the future of economies and societies and over which people have little control. Okay? So, theory of social change. That's why this one, technological determinism, is a theory that talking about social change in which technology is an important part in escapable uh, economic forces. That's why our social change is due to the Technology, technological changes, okay? Technology in general and communication technology in particular as the basis of society in the past, present, and even the future, okay? The, 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 the main driving force of the technology that changes the society is the technology in general and the IT technology in particular. Key technologies are the primary cause of changes in society in areas of communication, transport, material, and food productions. What technological determinism uh, argue is that the key technology development or the advancement of key technology is uh, are the prime are the main cause of changes in the society. Okay, because of we change the society behavior, we change the society uh, uh, culture or whatever because of the advancement of technology. So, in other words, technology causes the changes in society. Okay. And especially in the area of uh, communication, IT, transportation, uh, uh, materials, and food production. Okay. Last time, where, where we want to eat some food, we have to depend on the harvest of the, uh, from the uh, agriculture side. Okay. But now we have a canned food, we have a fast food, or whatever. We just put into the microwave to warm it up. Then we can eat already. Right. So this has changed our behavior. Last time, we need to cook it. We need to get the food. We wash it, cook it, or whatever. Right. It, it, last time there was no microwave, so we have to use our oven, use a charcoal to, to, to burn the charcoal and then to cook our food. Right? And uh, last time when we want to prepare a meal, it takes uh, a few hours to prepare. 
But now we just take out from the fridge, the frozen food or whatever, then we walk, heat it up in the microwave oven, then we got our, our food ready. So within half an hour, we get it done already. Right? So this has changed the culture, changed the way how we how, how we treated the food and so forth. The entire form of society is seen as being determined by technology. So the whole society behavior is seen, is deemed as being is causing, is caused by the technology. A new technology transforms society at every level, including institution, social interaction, and individual. Human factors and social arrangement are seen as secondary. Following the argument of social and technological determinism, our society, our behavior, uh, our culture, or whatever, everything in the society is changed due to the discovery of new technology or due to the transformation of technology. Okay? Whereas the human factors and the social arrangement are seen as secondary. They are not the main driving force to change a society. Okay? The main driving force that change a society is technology. And in acquiring new, new productive forces, men change their mode of productions. And in changing their mode of productions, they change the way of living, they change the, all their social relations, the, the, the hand mill, Diffuse society with the feudal lord, the steam mill society with the industrial capitalists. Okay, what does it mean? So, in uh, in acquiring of a new productive forces, men and men have changed. You know, because of the development in the technology, men has changed their production, the way of their production, the method of their productions. Okay, they have changed from uh, using the hand mill to a steam mill. Okay, so and during the era of the hand mill. There is a feudal system, okay? There is a slave, uh, uh, the slave is used to uh, operate the hand mill and so forth. But after the in invention of the steam mill, then we become in industrialized, we become uh, uh, automated, okay? We use a steam, we get the power for the hand mill from the steam mill instead of using the labor or the slave, right? So this change from a labor to a capitalist, uh, uh, industrial capitalist is not change, it's not because of of the thinking or the morale of the human that change, but it's because the development of the steam mill that no longer need to rely on the hand mill to provide them with the products. So because of the we can use a steam mill now, so we use less labor force. So now that's why you become an industrial capitalist. Okay, we may view a cultural system as a series of three horizons strata. Okay, three layer. The technological layer on the bottom, the most uh, lowest level, the philosophical level on the top, and the sociological stratum in between. Okay, so we have a technological here, and then we have the top, we have a uh, philosophical, and in between is a sociological. Okay, the technological system is basic and primary. Social systems are function of the technologies, and philosophy express technological forces and reflect social system. The technological factor is therefore the determine of the cultural system as a whole. It determines the form of social system, and the technology and society together determine the content and orientation of philosophy. Okay, so in other words, if we can draw a pyramid, okay, then the the the, the most lowest level is the technology, and this technology is influencing the sociology, the the second layer. Okay, and this uh, sociology. Is influencing the philosophical uh, issue. So, in other words, if you want to say who, which one is the cause of the changes, which one is the cause of the changes in the philosophical uh, level, then we go to the sociology, then we go down to the technological. Okay. So, in other words, technology. Uh, in other words, the technological factor is therefore the determinant of a cultural system as a whole, right? So, this is what the technology determinism. Uh, argue. In your opinion, what do you think? Is it our society shaped by the technology, or the technology shaped, or the society shaped the technology? So Ling, Chen Song Ling. Ah uh, yes. So in your opinion, is it the technology technology shaped our society, or our society shaped the technology? I think. In my opinion, I think uh, our society shape the uh, technology. Why do uh, you think so? Because uh, if it 
need something in our life, right? We will mm-hmm. we will apply uh we will apply our knowledge to create something mm-hmm. which uh which able to improve our life. Oh okay. So uh what is the operation system of your laptop? Uh? Is it still running DOS or, or Microsoft Office? Uh Microsoft Office. Why don't you use a uh, DOS? Uh, is it DOS? Uh? DOS? Uh, the DOS system? Now you okay. Uh, let's let's talk about processor. What is the processor of your your laptop? Um, yes, what? Processor of my laptop. Uh, okay, okay. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> well, let, let, let's change the question. Okay. What is the line? Why you want to change to a new laptop? Very often we change to a new laptop is not because of our laptop that cannot function. It's because of the software development and then they, it only can run on the latest technology, right? Our processor or whatever is incapable to run the system. So therefore we choose, we force to change our laptop. So in this case, we change our laptop is forced by the technology or forced by the uh, culture. Oh, society, sorry. Yes, Oli? I'm forced by the technology. Uh, so it's forced by technology. So, but just now you say that it's forced by the uh, society? When I'm asking you whether it's a culture, uh, the society shape the technology or technology shape the society? Yeah, now I, I, I understood the question. <laughs> but I didn't say you are wrong, you know. What mm-hmm. you say is also correct, you know. So there is no right or wrong answer here again. Okay, from the the school of thought, uh, from the school of uh, technological determinism, they are arguing that saying that the changes of the society happen is because of the advancement or, or, or introduction of new technology. The technology causes the changes into our society. On the contrary, there is on the other hand, there is another school of thought is talking about that. No, technology is not changing our society. It's our society that changes the technology. Okay, this is another school of thought, completely opposite, yeah? Okay. So it could be both, right? It could be both, yes. There is no who's right, who's wrong, okay? Now, rather than as a product of a society and an integral part of it, technology is presented as an independent, self-controlling, self-determining, self-generating, self-propelling, self-perpetuating, and self-expanding force, okay? Everything is done by the technology itself. Like the AI today, is, it may evolve on by its own, okay? It is seen as out of a human control, changing under its own momentum and blindly shaping the society, okay? Because they, they are technology, but they do not know what is our value. They do not know what are, is our cultural things or whatever. So they just change. You, you can think that they are, they are changing themselves independently. They are for self-propelling and then they are self-perpetuating, okay? That means the, 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 the technology moving at once and at once faster and faster by itself own okay like last time the processor is a uh, 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 c5 or whatever now go to c7 or whatever so it's by its own moving faster and faster then we, we are forced to follow the pace right the frankenstein uh, syndrome is, is talking about one create once one creates a machine for a particular and limited purpose but once the machine is built we discover always to our surprise that it has ideas of its own that is quite capable not only of changing our habit, but of changing our habit of mind, okay? What it means here is, once we de- uh, develop a machine or, or, or products, okay, it looks like the, the, the machine itself can think on its own, okay? And because of the machine, the, the way you use machine or whatever, like last time from the hand mill to the steam mill, it changed the way we, uh, we operate the machine. So it on, and indirectly also changing our habits, okay? So this is what uh, I mean. Okay, many modern needs are themselves inventions. Many modern things, uh, the needs uh, are invented themselves. The product of an economy, not society at large, but as part of society tied to the technology. Okay, that stimulates consumption so that it can make and market things for a profit. Okay, now why why we want to have a, what is the latest technology for laptop? Uh? What is the latest processor? Laptop? Intel i9 MD R7. Uh, Intel, Intel i9, right? 
Why we move from uh, I5 to, to, to 7 to 9 or whatever? It's because we want to gain money, isn't it? Right? So it's to, it's to stimulate consumption so that it can make and marketing uh, market things for a profit. Right? So in other words, we do we really need I9 or not? Is it mean that without I9, we, our I7 cannot, uh, we cannot work? Not really, isn't it? If I7 is still good enough, still can work, right? But because of the time, then sooner or later, I7 will be obsolete. Then or whenever you want to buy the laptop, you, you, you ask for I, I5 or I7, then the seller will tell you, sorry, obsolete already. So you are forced to change to I9. Okay? So you have in, in directly, in other words, you have no choice. You cannot choose. You cannot make your own choice what type of system that you want. Okay? So it's not the society at large that change the, uh, create the modern needs, okay? But it's uh, created by the technology itself. Okay, the lure of always pushing towards the greater speed of technical performance or complexity, which is currently available. Prohibitively expensive to abandon a complex technological system, such as a nuclear power. Therefore, the initial decisions to develop nuclear power technology will be supported by, uh, will, will need to be supported by using it. So whenever we, we, we sometimes if we have a technology and if we want to abandon it, it could cost you a fortune. You know, the cost is very high. For example, if we have a nuclear power plant, okay, if you want to set up a nuclear power plant, uh, how many billion ringgit we, we need to build it, okay? If you want to abandon it, then it's a very high cost, right? So that's why technology, we still stick to the technology, we don't abandon the technology. Unless there is a new technology being developed, and then you put a uh, creative destruction happening, then the technology will go uh, So If no advancement of technology, we are still keep to it. Just like nuclear power, we have been using nuclear power for so long already, in other countries, not in Malaysia. Similarly, the technical technological system of using petroleum oil as a fuel of choice has spawned the development of the development of the infrastructure of oil explorations, production and supply. The production of the engines and equipment operated by the petroleum power engines and infrastructure of road, airport, etc. The knowledge and skill related to this technological system, the social and economic activities tied to this technological system, it would be all be too massive and exorbitantly expensive and disruptive to change it so it continue. Okay, so we're talking about the petrochemical industry. So, because we are we are mining for the petrol for as uh, to use it as a fuel, right? So it has causes the development of an infrastructure, oil explorations, uh, and also the the, the refinery uh, system and so forth. Indirectly, it also causes the uh, develop the infrastructure of road, airport, and so forth for transportations, right? So once we have this technology system in place, it is too costly or too massive uh, as as obviously too too expensive for us to abandon this technology. Right, and disruptive to change, so it's disruptive to change it, so it continues. So if it's too too expensive for us to abandon it, so it's continue. Even as petroleum oil is definitely reaching the point of depletion. Okay, even though we are we are going to run out of petroleum, but we're still using it. Okay, society cannot or dare not or unable or unwilling to free itself from this technology. Are you willing to give up from the using of uh, petroleum? I don't think so, right? Today we still need a petrol, right? If no petrol, then your car, then there is how, how to power your car, right? So that no, society cannot or dare not free the free itself to free the society from this technology, which seems to develop on its own, okay? So because we are too depending on this uh, oil and gas technology, and we are reluctant to give up the use of uh, petroleum, so we are depending on the technology. So the technology will evolve on its own, okay? They will expand from time to time, the new development will coming in. Okay, up to here, any question? Okay, if no question, we'll continue. On a smaller scale, the defining concept of the QWERTY keyboard. Okay, you look at your keyboard. Is your keyboard Q, uh, arranged in such a way that QWERTY? Right, it is yes. origin. Uh, okay, why don't they put A B C D E F instead of uh, Q W E R T? There's no 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 trend or no pattern one. Why? 
there is a this technology was first developed for the typewriter, okay? And they find out that if let's say they put the alphabet in a very uh, sequential method, the typist will type very fast. And when you type very fast, you'll cause the machine to jam up. So that's why the keyboard is purposely put it as a Q-W-E-R-T-Y to slow down the typing speed of the typewriter so that it won't jam up the machine. Okay, but in today's we we forget about the, the actual actual meaning or actual needs of the Q W E R T Y uh, keyboard. We just use it as it is. We just take for granted. Okay, initially it is meant to slow down the typing speed of a uh, of the writer or the typewriter. Okay. Okay, technological revolutions leading to historical era defined by. This or that technology, okay? Technological revolutions leading, causing the historical era defined by the technology, the age of machinery, the age of automation, the age of atomic age. We're talking about nuclear, there's an atomic age, the space age, the electronics age, okay? And now we are in the IT age, okay? Autonomous technology, what does this uh, uh, autonomous technology mean? This one means the technology will de develop independently. You don't need to say that, uh, wait for the, that when you are discussing about tutorial questions uh, last, last week or this week for Monday group, then you are, you are talking about, and as an engineer, we need to have a better understanding on the societal needs so that we can develop or design something that uh, is useful for the society, isn't it? Right? So that is because of society needs, then we develop it. But under the technological determinism school of thought, we are saying that the technology is autonomous. Technology develops independently. It does not depend on the social need or whatever. It develops on its own. Okay, and once it develops on its own, it moves forward, just like your computer, it moves from I, uh, I5 to I7, then to I7, I9, right? It will never go back to I5 again. We are moving from the typewriter to computer, so it's, we are not going to go back to the typewriter again. So it's the, when you move forward, you keep on moving forward, it won't go back to the same place again. It is irreversible, okay? And it's unstoppable. Can you stop the computer from developing? You are as a society, you cannot stop it, isn't it? Right, the, the factory is keep on producing, improve the, the, the processor with a better and better uh, features or faster and faster processing time, right? So it's unstoppable. So in other words, technology is developed by its own. Okay, and once it moves forward, it won't go back to the old time again, and it is unstoppable, okay? So this is what we call an autonomous technology. Technology is now the engine driving the world economy. Okay, it continues, continues the chain, and we have a shorter production life cycle, okay? So technology is now the engine that drives the world economy. Do you agree with this statement? Without technology, our world economy may not improve so much, may not move so fast, right? It's a driving force, okay? It's a driving force. Okay, and in how are we going to manage the change? If the change is uh, uh, moving so fast, okay? So in order to manage the change, we need to accelerate the innovation process, okay? That's why in the R&D side, we need to use less, shorter and shorter time to invent, to create a new product. Okay, and as a human being, uh, we need to constantly update our knowledge, okay? So we need to be a lifetime learner. And we need to continue reskilling of our labor to learn, learn new knowledge. That is why uh, in your uh, course learning outcome, uh, in your assignment, we want you to do the literature review because it tied up with the course learning outcome of lifelong learning. Yeah, as an engineer today, we need to be a lifelong learner, okay? We need, we need to be able to update our knowledge from time to time. And we need to move to the computer integrated uh, manufacturing, CIM, as the main vehicle, or now we are talking about automation and uh, artificial intelligence, right? So these are the things that we may need to have it in order for us to adopt, uh, to, to adapt to the changes of our technology. Okay, now, up to here, any question about technological determinism? Can you follow? You may need some time to digest it. Like it's, it's a bit abstract. Right? Sometimes we will confuse it with the social determinism. Okay, now, as, as I mentioned just now, uh, 
whether technology shape the society or society shape the technology, okay? Another school of thought is called social determinism is talking about how can an activity initiated by human possibly be outside of society and independent variable? How can a creation or a dependent variable be independent of its creator? Okay, it is talking about how does the society shape the technology? Okay, how can an activity initiated by human being possibly be outside of the society and independent variable? So humans shape the technologies. Okay, this is market force, right? Why we want why we want to develop i5, uh, i7 and i9? Because we want to make money. Okay, we, we want to market new products, we want to make money. So that's why we go and develop the society need a faster uh, computer. So that's why because there is a demand from the society, that's why the, the human being shape the technology. Okay, no use if too far ahead of its time. Not acceptable if too expensive. This is talking about the product. If, if the product is too far ahead, too advanced or whatever, and at this moment of time, there is no use, all right? And it is not acceptable if it is too expensive. So because of this, there are the need of the products and a cheap uh, and, a, and, a, and a lower cost. That's why there is a market force for us to develop a new product, a new technology. That's why they call it social determinism. We go back then, the, because of society need it, that's why we develop the technology. Okay, well, but the, the technological determinism say technology forces the society to change. Whether you like it or not, the society is moving forward without uh, going back, so you have to follow. Just like you buy a laptop, you buy the more and more advanced one, later you uh, if, if someone asking you don't buy the SSD one, then you say what? A laptop without SSD solid state? Then you, you are forced to follow the trend of the development of society. Technology opens doors, it does not compel men to enter. Okay, in, according to this group of uh, uh, school of thought, it's saying that yes, technology is a uh, created opportunity, but it does not force you to enter, it does not force you to take the technology. I develop, uh, develop i9, but I did not force the market to take uh, to, to buy the i9 laptop. If you, if you like it, you can still buy a Celeron or, or i5 laptop, okay? This is what they claim. But in the, in the case of computer, you've got no choice. The i5 is, is almost uh, obsolete, right? So you need to go to i7 or i9 already. Okay, the making of the mid world to suit perceived human priorities. Uh, what they say here is, we are making the world that same as what our priority, okay? What we want the world to be made. What, what we want the world to be looks like, okay? So what we want, so what we want, we want means the society wants, okay? What our society wants our world to be look like, then we are shape it. We are going to develop the technology to shape our world accordingly. Technological changes are themselves socially engineered and or that work relationship are in any case derived from or ultimately determined by cultural or social aspect. What he said that the technological changes, the changes of technology always is derived from the cultural or social aspect. It's due to the cultural issue or social issue. That's why we develop the technology, okay? In other words, outside social factor determine how technology is developed and use and what it means for relationship and work. Okay, outside social factor determines how technology is developed. Okay, we are talking about outside the, the, the in other words, outside social factors, yeah? Determine how technology is developed and used and what it means for relationship and work. So it is all de determined by the society. Technology does not come from nowhere. It does not drop from the sky or grow from the earth. It's created by a complex human social organization, is it? It's created by those people in the R&D. It's created by those companies uh, doing the R&D, right? So that's why the technology is not uh, developed by its own. It is created by a complex human social organization. Development of any technology is based on availability of finance. You want to develop a technology is not saying that you want to develop, then you will develop it. You must have the financial resources to support your R&D, right? So it depends on the availability of finance. 
That finance can only come from the profit accrual from the previous idea which society has accepted. How do you get the profit? Oh, because I'm selling something that accepted by the society, right? So it's, you are getting the profit from the products that you sell, product which is uh, accepted by the society, and uh, individually or companies purchasing the technologies product in the marketplace, okay? Or the, the individuals like you purchase a laptop or a company purchasing the laptop uh, in the marketplace, okay? So in other words, you want to develop a, a technology, you need money, okay? And where do you get the money? You need to create a, pro, a product that is accepted by the society. When the society, individual or company purchase a product, then you get the profit, right? So again, the profit is coming from the society needs, yeah? So this one again is uh, uh, explaining what does it mean by social determinism. Society always involved economically and politically in development and nourishing of the technology. Okay, the society always involved themselves in economically and politically. Uh, politically means we may come up with a certain rules and regulation to restrict or to, uh, to favor the certain technology. For example, if let's say we are talking about green energy, right? So now today, our, our government may give you an uh, incentive of, to a company if you are dealing with the green energy, right? So it is politically. So we are interfere with the uh, in, uh, in the uh, in the relationship with the technology is related to political and also economical issue. Okay. Social determinism does not and could not deny that technology has an impact on the society. So social determinism it does not say no, technology do not have an impact. <laughs> that, uh, social determinism agrees saying that technology has an impact on the society. But it emphasizes more on the social forces behind the development and implementation of the technology. Okay? In other words, the social determinism still say yes, technology can influence the society, okay, but technology is not the main driver or the main force that drives the development and implementation of technology. Okay? The, the main force that drives the driven the, the uh, development and implementation of technology is the society. Okay, this is the argument put forward by the social determinant, determinant school of thought. Okay, now, the issue is technocracy. The system of experts and their rational plans for efficiency. The technology is perhaps beneath. The solution to the problem is not radical choice, but human constructions, community building. Okay, the technology, it, the, the, the key here is the solutions to a problem is not radical choice, okay? It's not a technology uh, changes, of, but it's a human constructions. It's a community building. It's we human being that chain it. Technological man is someone dependent, dependent on the powerful drug. The pusher is the technocrat who continues to feel and expand the additions. Escape is difficult but possible through community of individual works together. Technology is not beyond control, but it is out of control and can still be recalled. It is a cultural rather than a political processes. Okay, this is what I say here is, a technology is not beyond our control, but it is actually out of control. We cannot control it. Okay, it's not beyond our capability, it's out of control. And we, we can still go recall the, the, the technology, we can still go backward of it, but it is a, it, it, if this thing happens, it's a cultural thing rather than a political process. Okay. Cloning is inevitable once it is possible, right? A real reflector of a technological determinism. Yeah, once we created the cloning, whether our, uh, our society need it or not, it will move forward, right? It will change on its own, it will develop on its own. So it is a reflective of a technological determinism. Technological determinism is a theory that technology is an autonomous, as one we mentioned, an autonomous of technology, force that changes the society, okay? It is a theory saying that the technology is an autonomous force that changes the society, and this provides explanation for many changes that can be observed in society. Okay, for example, like let, let's say like the negative issue, the, the camera with the negative. Okay, now is it the camera change your the the the, the technology of a, a digital camera change your behavior or your your behavior change the technology of camera? Which is which? You got no choice, isn't it? You now you cannot buy the, the camera with the negative that using the negative, right? You're you're forced to use it, whether you like it or not, you are forced to use it, use the digital camera, whether you use it 
on handphone or whatever or, or, or stand alone uh, camera, right? You are forced to use it, right? So that that is why the provide explanation. Uh, this technological determinism explain why we change our behavior of photo taking, okay? Because of the simple cause or because of the development of technology. Yeah? Unfortunately, this theory is false. That's why this theory is not, not correct. If you think you have an instant, you have an example, it means that you are looking at it just one part of much more complex situations and ignoring the complex social network and the supports the technology. So if you agree with this uh, statement, social technological determinism, that the, the technology is an autonomous forces that change the society, you are wrong. That's why this theory are wrong, okay? Why? Because it's only looking at the small portion of the overall picture. They, they are ignoring a lot of complex social networking and, and supporting uh, technology, right? In other words, which one is right, which one is wrong? Technological determinism or social determinism? The answer is, if you look at, if you, if you agree with technological determinism, you are wrong because it is not only depending on the technology, the society has played a big role in determining what technology wants to be de developed. But if you are agree with the technological determinism, you may also be wrong because there are, in fact, there are technology that is moving by its own, like cloning and the computer processor, right? Whether you like it or not, you are forced to change your laptop to a newer uh, technology. Fusion power just doesn't have the impetus to succeed. Uh, this, one, this one is just a uh, social determinism, yeah? Okay, social determinism is the theory that society is an autonomous. So you see, in technological determinism, you say technology is an autonomous. But social determinism is say that society is an autonomous force that change the technology. Okay, so it provides explanation for many changes that can observe in technology, and it also have a very simple cause and effect form. It is the converse of technological determinism, and it's also false. Okay, if you are agree with social uh, technology, uh, agree with social determinism, you are also wrong. Okay, if you think that you have an instant an example. It properly means that you are looking at just one part of a more complex situations. Okay, if you are saying that okay, social determinism is hundred percent correct. That's when you are looking at the small part of overall picture only, right? So which one is right, which one is wrong? There is no answer for you, depending on which angle you are looking at. Okay, depending on which uh, which perspective are you looking at. Okay, any question? Any question? Can you follow or not? Can you understand? Uh? Yes, between, sir. Uh, can you follow between the uh, social determinism and uh, technological determinism? These are two main school of thoughts, uh, right? So it's a bit abstract. You may need to use your imaginations. Okay, technological or social determinism, which is which? Technological determinism say technology follows some inherent logic of its own and affect the society. Okay? And so Social determinant Pula say that society determined the, the shape of the technology. Okay, so technological determinism, I repeat that many times again. Technology follow the inherent logic of its own. It follow aut autonomous. It develop on its own, moving forward and never, never, never go backward. Okay, but social determinism say the society is the one who that determine how to shape the technology. Yeah, so two are hundred percent contrary to each other. Mutual constitution, a continual in, continual interaction with each other, changing the others. Okay, you might I say that in a in a, in a whole picture, there is there are some instances there is technological determinism, some are social determinism. Okay, so there's a mutual constitution. Let's look at the following. Information is a basic of communications, right? Only man uses structure speech. Animals, we we have a grammar, we have a uh, whatever we are using grammar, so that our speech or our messages, we follow the, the, the grammar or the rules of a language to communicate, right? Whereas in the animals, we don't have that language as far as we know, right? We, we, we don't have we, we don't have the so-called structured speech, and information can convey over time and space in human memory in one speech alone. Writing or the script or picture further develop this by replacing human vessel in communication of information through time and space. Now, when, when we communicate through our, our verbal communications, right? 
So we can trans we can we, we can convey the message over the time and space through our memory. We can remember that, right? But the inventions of the writing, the technology, the, the, the script or picture, we further develop this by replacing our human brain in communication of information through time and space. Development of photography and photography extended this ability through distant and images of sound, okay? And the development of the photography and phonography extended the ability for us to convey the message, convey the picture through a distance or through sound or MP4 or MP3, okay? Up to this stage, information can only be stored and reproduced through time and space, not direct action possible by information without intervention of human being, okay? So up to this stage, we still need the intervention. We need the people, we need the man to intervene it. How, to, how, how are we going to write it? How are we going to save it, to store it, to store the information, okay? So development of computers and computer give man the ability to use information to realize output directly through the machine. Now, if we are using computer, now we do not need to write or whatever. We can get the output directly from the computer, okay? So the three major development that are responsible for this is uh, the, the, the invention of transistor. Last time we use, uh, we, when there is no transistor, we don't have our even TV or whatever, isn't it? So the development of transistor, then we, 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 we have a computer. Then after that, we go to digitizations and then go to the codification of digital information. Why we make a code there. And then this development of network further extended the power of computing. Okay. So this is again is a technological determinism. With computers following are possible. So if we, we by using computer, we can processing of information, not just store or reproduce the same, we can process the information. And information can be used to control the operation of machine just like your, your, your these uh, automations, okay, without the direct intervention of human being. Last time, before the computer, before the automations, we want to stop the computer, uh, we want to stop the, the what you say, the, the machine, we need to off it manually, right? Or we want to change the temperature of the machine, we need to change it manually. Now, with the intervention of this uh, machine or, or automatic system, once the temperature is not right, it automatically uh, turn on the heater or whatever, without using any human interventions, okay? So this amplifies the human mental capability, not just physical capability. Now, if machine can replace human in the following circumstances of job, right? The machine can have replaced the routine processing job, processing job. Every day, day in, day out, you are doing the same thing. That is the easiest to replace by the machine, right? Like uh, you can use a robot for, for the operations or whatever, why? Because the distance travel, the temperature, the whatever you want the robot to do is always the same. You keep on repeating the same nature of, uh, of the work. So you can use a uh, uh, robotics uh, uh, or automate, uh, automate your, your jobs so that you don't need to hire a human operator. Okay. What will be in the effect on society if changes in the job patterns, social interaction, housing, living pattern and change? If our, our job pattern change already, now last time it is a labor intensive, now change to uh, automations, what are the changes on our society? Okay. What is the changes, what are the changes in the human skill requirement? Last time we may need someone that is very muscular, have a lot of energy, but now we do not need that kind of labor. We need someone that is very skillful in computing or software, uh, these uh, uh, automations, right? They may be uh, very skillful with their fingers. Uh, last time they have, they have to be very muscular. They need to use a lot of energy during their operation work. Right now, we just sit in front of the computer and using our finger to press the equipment. Okay. So it changes in the social habits, our, our, our society expectations. So last time we, 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 without the the technology, what are our social habits? What are we doing now with the technology? What are we doing? Okay. And with the technology, is it dehumanization of society? Are we depending less and less from the human being? We depend more and more on the uh, machinery. So what is it? What, what, what is the answer? Okay, I'd like you to think about it. The role of agriculture and industrial production in the information age. Now we are looking at agriculture, okay, as an example. Agriculture has now become mature industry. 
That's why they are seldom uh, developed anymore. It's matured, uh, saturated already. With high efficiency and high productivity, able to function effectively with little needs for direct labor to make it more efficiently. Okay, so now agriculture, we use a lot of machine. We use we we, we have reduced the use of man uh, uh manpower tremendously. Okay, so now agriculture, we only use a little bit of a direct labor to make it more efficient. Okay, industry production is also reaching saturation point. Uh, high efficiency and low direct labor requirement to improve the efficiency. As far as uh, industrial production, they're also reaching a saturated point, uh, also matured industry. Okay, so now we are looking for how to further improve the productivity. But people need to be employed, okay? But all these are saturated. But people need to be employed. Their effort needed to be harnessed and coordinated. This is done through the use of information technology. So we still need to let people employ, let people to find a job. Okay, but they are all good for automation or whatever. So how do we create job? So the answer is information technology, right? Done, done this through, to create a job through the use of information technology, okay? In agriculture, with the information technology, better prediction of supply and demand for agricultural produce, not just growing the right crops, but the right crops at the right time. When are you supposed to, to, to plant the crops? When is your demand coming in or whatever? the computer, uh, the, the information technology will tell you, okay? While in the industry area sector, reduction of wastage of raw material, because you minimize the, uh, the handling uh, intervention of human being, power storage obsolescence through the use of information technology, such as your CAD CAM, your, your, your material, uh, uh, build of material, okay? So all this, you save your time, yeah? you reduce uh, the human error, so that you are save the raw material, the, the reduction of a wastage of raw material, power storage, and so forth. So this is how the technology change our society. Okay. Okay. Before we go to technology transfer, I would like to stop here. Uh, any question? Okay. If no question, then go back. Uh, just go through the uh, the the. the on the slide, I, I will give you only next week. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, go and read out technological determinism and uh, social determinism. Okay. So for a new year holiday, when you have nothing to do, just go and Google this uh, technological determinism and social determinism. So that you have a better read up and so that you have a better understanding on it. All right. Okay. Any, any question before I end the class? Okay, if no question, then thank you, class. Next Monday, uh, the class is as usual. Huh? All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And happy Chinese New Year.